This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create a vectorized tracing of any image using Inkscape. So I'll go ahead and uh, open up Inkscape here. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. And I will also have a link to this image I'll be referencing throughout the video uh, for this tutorial, which is a picture of this bird here. So just go ahead and download that and click and drag that into Inkscape. And uh, from uh, the image type, we want, I mean, the uh, import type, we want to choose embed, image DPI, default import resolution, image rendering mode, none, and that should be good. Go ahead and click OK. If you're using Mac, by the way, you'll have to go to file, import, because I believe the uh, click and drag, I've been, I've been told the click and drag method doesn't work with the Mac. So uh, just go ahead and do that if that doesn't work. And now that we have this image imported into Inkscape, uh, we're just going to set up the document to make sure we're all work working on the same page here. So we'll go to File, Document Properties, and I want to set the display units to PX, and I want to turn off the page border that we can close out of that. Then we go to, uh, we're going to want to go to View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then we'll go to Zoom. We'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. So we're zoomed in at 100% like this, and I'll move over here. By the way, if you'd like to move the page around like this, you could just hold down the uh, mouse wheel and move the mouse. Um, next, I want to open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button right there. And then I want to open up the Layers panel with this button right here where it says View Layers. Go ahead and click on that. And then we should have our uh, Fill and Stroke dialog and the Layers dialog opened. And that's what we will need for this tutorial. So this image is placed on Layer 1 up here. So I'm going to take this image and I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little bit. Just so that we can see what we're going to be drawing on top of it. And what I want to do now is I want to create a new layer going on top of this. So I'm going to click on the plus button to create a new layer. And we want to leave it as above current. Let it be named layer 2. It doesn't really matter what the name is. Go ahead and click add. And I'm going to create the beak here. So I'm going to zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here. The keyboard shortcut for that is the letter B. And I want to click on the point of the beak to create a point right there. And I want to move the page around. Again, you could press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse to move the page. I want to zoom out a little bit, actually. Uh, you could hold control and roll up and down the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And what I, once I put a point at the point of the beak, I want to bring it up here to the corner of the beak. And then click and hold the click and then just drag. And if you, know, if you notice, as we drag, there's a red line that appears. And we want the curvature of that red line to match the curvature of the uh, bird's beak there, so or, or somewhat relatively close, just like that. And once you've done that, you can let go of the click and press Enter on the keyboard. And if you notice, we now have a line curved in the shape of the beak. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to go around just creating these shapes going around each uh, area of the bird image here. So what I'll do next is I'll draw this next part of the beak. I'm going to bring the cursor over to this point, and I'm going to wait till that that node highlights red. Once it's red, go ahead and click so it attaches to this line instead of it being two separate lines. And I'll bring this point over here. And again, once I get the point to where I want it to be, go ahead and hold the left click and then just drag the mouse to create a curve there. And that's a pretty good curve right about there, I'd say. We can let go of the click and then press Enter on the keyboard to create an extension of that line. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to bring the cursor so it highlights the, uh, the uh, node into red. Click on that. And I'm going to connect this back to the starting point, but then I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to hold the click and drag so that we can make the curvature of the beak match the image here. Go ahead and click on that. And we now have that shape. We can go ahead and color that in black or dark gray, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to finish up the rest of the beak first. So uh, I'll come over here. I'll start this next shape over here. I'll come over here, click and drag to match the curvature of that line, press enter. And we're pretty much going to be repeating these same steps over and over again. I'll go ahead and click over here. Maybe bring this over here. Maybe I'll bring this through because it looks like it connects there in the image. Bring this over here. Right about here, click and drag. Press enter. Connect it to this line. Bring this around over here press enter, 
connect another line back to the starting point, and again, just click and drag, click and hold on that point to be able to, to create a curve like that. And if somewhere along the line you make a mistake, you could just hit Control Z or Edit Undo to go back. Um, sometimes it could be a little tricky, like for example, when you create a line like that and you want to connect it back together, sometimes like you'll click on it and you want to create a curve out of it, but then you forgot to. So you could just you could just undo it by hitting Control Z and go back and do it over again. And you'll have to go to the Select tool and select the line so we have it selected, and then go back to the Bezier pen so you can connect the lines together. So that's how you can do that. Um, let's go back to this over here. I'm going to click on this shape, then hold shift and click on that shape. And I'm going to make this a dark gray. And I'll just hold shift and click on the little X down here in the bottom left corner to get rid of that outline. And then click off of that to deselect everything. I'll take this shape right here and I'm going to go to the edit paths by nodes tool. And if you notice this corner right here, it's a little squared off. It almost looks like a like like a, like a polygon. I want to smooth that out, so I'm just going to hold Control and click on that node to make it smooth like that. It doesn't have to match the curvature of the image beneath it perfectly, just somewhat relatively close. And I'd say that's pretty good right there. And once we've done that, if you notice here, if you toggle off the visibility of that layer, we have the beak on that one layer, and we have the main image on the first layer. And it's a good idea to construct this entire image with each element having its own layer, which we're going to do. So let me go back to the Bezier pen. I'm going to create this white part of the bird's face here. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to create a new layer. Go ahead and click Add. And with that new layer selected, oops, with that new layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag to create another shape that matches the white part of the bird's uh, feathers here. Just like that. And again, I'm just clicking on the I'm clicking on the point when it highlights red. Let me go back actually. You want to, you want to make sure it highlights red. Once it highlights red, then go ahead and click it. Come over here, click and drag, hit enter. Do the same thing over here. And this one we may have to uh, skew a little bit. That's pretty good right there. And for this part, I'm going to try to create shapes going in the shape of these uh, feathers here. They're not going to be exact, but something somewhat close should be good. We do something like that. Take this one over here, like that. And if you couldn't tell by now, this is this is this sort of thing can be a bit time consuming, but the end result comes out pretty well. It's easy once you get the idea of it. The only thing is it just it takes a lot of time. Go ahead and hit enter. Do the same thing down here. And create one more going through here. Hit enter. And if you notice, I made this beak, I made it dark gray instead of black because I want to be able to see these black lines coming through here as I create them. So uh, create another line here. I want this to go through here. And for this, we just want to make sure we have the snap to cusp nose. We want that icon turned on. If you hover the cursor over it, it'll tell you which icon is each. The one that says snap cusp nodes, we want that one turned on. I'm going to snap to this corner of the beak right here. Hit enter. And then I'll just connect these back together like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to the edit paths by nodes tool. And I'm just going to smooth some of this out. I'm going to hold control and click on that node to smooth it out. Hold control, click on that node to smooth it out. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll even smooth out this node too. That one's bothering me a little bit. I'll hold control, click on that one. And this will have to be, I'll have to play around with this a little bit. Whoops, maybe I'll bring that around. And that should be good enough. I'll leave that just as it is. And what I want to do is I'll go back to the select tool. I'll click on this shape that we just drew, which is up here on layer three. Or you know what? I might have had it on layer two, actually. No, no, I'm on layer three. Okay, yeah, so uh, we're on layer three with this. I want to color this in with like a light shade, maybe something like this down here, like one of the lighter shades of brown, maybe even like almost white. And I want to hold control and click the X to get rid of that outline. And I want to take this layer and click and drag it beneath 
whoops, I wanna click and drag it beneath, oh, you know what, we don't have to click and drag it. We, just, we could just click this button over here that says lower the layer, lower the current layer, click on that, and it'll bring that down beneath the bird's beak there. And what I wanna do now is I wanna turn off the visibility of that layer because we're gonna to have to draw the eye now. I'm gonna temporarily turn off the visibility of layer three. I'll come back up here, I'll create a new layer. This one's gonna be layer four. And I'm gonna create this eye right here. So I'll just grab the circles and ellipses tool. We don't need to use the Bezier pen for that. I'm just gonna hold control and shift and click and drag to create a circle right there. You go back to the select tool. Uh, I'm going to have to bring the opacity of that up so I can see it a little more. I'll make this one dark gray as well. Maybe make that a little bigger. That's pretty good. I I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'll make this maybe like a, uh, a, a slightly off shade just to uh, match the bird's eye there. And I'll hold Control and Shift and scale that down. I'll take that circle right there and duplicate that as well by hitting Control D. And I'll hold Control and Shift and scale that down until it matches uh, the size of the bird's eye right there. And then we can hold shift and click on all three of those objects. I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way up. Click off of that to deselect everything. And if I turn on the visibility of layer three, you'll see we have the eye there now and this appears uh, underneath it. So let me turn the visibility of that back off because we're gonna create these lines right here now, these black lines on the bird's face. And to do that, I'm going to put this on layer four, the same layer that this is on. To do that, we're going to use the Bezier pen. Let's come back to the Bezier pen. But we're going to change the preset up here where it says shape. We want to change that to where it says none. We want to change that to ellipse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and roll up to zoom in a little more. I'm going to create this line right here. I'm going to, I'm going to put a point right here and then another point right here at this corner and just curve it a little bit. Hit enter and then create another line. If you notice, it took an ellipse and it stretched it out into the shape of that path, which is what we were going for. So I'm gonna continue this line coming over here to match the image, hit enter. And now we have that image here. And what you can do is you can go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and you'll see we now have a little handle. You could bring that in to change the thickness of the uh, the line there, which I think is pretty cool. I don't think we had that in, in, in uh, earlier versions of Inkscape, but in version 92, or uh, yeah, 92, I think that might be a new feature. And you can just edit this a little bit in case you get in like little, uh, you know, hard corners there. Maybe you'll do something like that. Edit that a little more. And I'm just gonna make that a little smaller with that handle. And that's pretty good right there. I'm gonna go back to the, the uh, Bezier pen I'm going to create another line going right here. Click and drag, hit enter, and I'll go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and scale that down a little bit. Just like that. And I'll create another one. Come back over here. Go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, scale that down. We're just going to go and create all these lines. Maybe not all of them, just maybe like one in each main area to represent everything. Uh, go back to the Bezier pen. I'm going to speed this up now and finish this up and then I'll catch up with you once I'm done. Okay, so now I'm done creating the shapes to match the image here. What I want to do is create this little square. Well, it's not really a square. It's more of like a, uh, like a rectangle shape over here. Uh, but before we do that, I want to change the shape of the Bezier pen here. With that selected, we want to change this, sh uh, this shape back to none. Now we can go ahead and just create a little four-point a little four point, uh, rectangle Oops. going along the shape of that. I'll just make that the same dark gray that we used before. I'll hold shift and click the X to turn that off. And I'm going to go back to the select tool over here. And I want to click on one of these lines that we created. And I'm going to hold shift and click on the rest of them. We want to have all of them selected and we want to convert, once we have them all selected, we want to convert them to paths by going to path, object to path, and then turn on the, uh, well not turn on, change the uh, color to 90% gray to match the other items in the image. And what we could do now is we could turn on the visibility of layer three and you can see we have that part of the image completed. And oh, you know what, maybe, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty good. What I'm going to do now is create this uh, this green part of the image right here. So the time-consuming part is really done for this tutorial. This was the main time-consuming part right here is the bird's face. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and create a, a new layer for this green part, another one for this yellow part, and then over here this looks like a darker blue, almost like a purple, and then come down here and finish up the rest of this. So this should be pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Let me come back up here to the top layer, add a new layer in there, go ahead and click Add. And I'm going to grab the Bezier pen and I'm going to create this green shape right here. I'll click over here, click and drag, create a curve going around the shape. Again, it doesn't have to match the image precisely, just, just something that looks okay or close enough. I'll come over here, continue on that shape. And maybe I'll do something like this to, ma to match the, uh, like the shape of the feathers there. Come over here and do the same thing. Maybe bring this over here. And maybe I'll connect this to the corner over here and just curve that out. Hit enter. And I'll just connect this back to the starting point. And I want to make this green, so I'll grab a nice shade of green, maybe something like this. I mean, you could you could grab the colors from the image directly using the dropper tool, but I don't recommend doing that because whenever you grab colors from an image directly, you sometimes get like a muddy shade because uh, the, the image isn't always in perfect clarity or perfect resolution. And I think it's just better to go manually pick out different colors that'll, you know, that won't be as muddy. It'll be nice and clear and it'll pop better. And you can edit the shade to your own liking too, like I'm doing here. Uh, I'm doing this under the fill tab, which is under the HSL tab. So I'm gonna go with that shade of green there. I like that. And I'm gonna turn off the outline. I'm gonna come back down here Hold shift and click X to turn off the outline. And I want to lower that layer until it goes beneath the white part under there. And that's that's good right there. And maybe I'll edit that a little more. That's all right. And I'm just going to go to the edit pads by nodes tool and I'm just going to smooth out some of these lines. Oh wow, we didn't want that effect. Let me change that. Okay, that's good. And I think I'll leave that as it is. So what I'll do now is click on this top layer and we're going to add a new layer. This is going to be layer six. And I'm going to create the yellow part. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, snap to this corner over here, and just come over here and click and drag to create another curve. Hit enter. And for this one, maybe I'll just do, um, oops. Oh, you know what? I have to select that and connect that. Maybe for this one, I'll just do like rough shapes here. I won't use as many curves. Something like this. And then I'll just go like this and use these rough shapes. I don't think it necessarily has to be all perfectly curved like that. Maybe I'll do that. As you see here, it's not perfect. I'm cutting it off a little bit, but that's all right. It's gonna come out looking fine regardless. Come over here, do this. I'm gonna match this curve going around the curve of the blue part of the uh, bird's feather in the image. Maybe I'll do this down here, hit enter. Match this up with the feather, hit enter. Do the same thing. Maybe I'll bring this up here like that. And I'm actually gonna just connect this back together and I'm gonna go straight through here and bring it back to the starting point. Cause we're gonna create another object going in here that's gonna layer over this. And once we've done that, I'm gonna make that a shade of yellow. I'll go with something like that. Maybe I'll make it a little more orange. I'll take this H row and slide that to the left slightly to add a splash of red in there to make it a little more orange. I'll hold shift, click on the X to turn off the, uh, the stroke. And I'll just lower this down one, two, three, three layers like that. And what I'll do now actually is I'll turn off the visibility of that layer. That was layer six that we just created, I think. Yeah, we'll turn off the visibility so we can create this next one here. Or you know what, let's, see, let's turn that back on. We could just create it right on this layer right here. So let's take that object actually and bring the opacity down a little bit. And I'll grab the Bezier pen and I'll just go ahead and create 
another object going along the shape of this dark blue bunch of feathers right here. Maybe I'll do something like that. Hit enter. Bring this down here. Like that. And I'll bring this all the way up through here. Bring this through here like that. Hit enter. And then just connect it back to the starting point going through the, the image like that. And I'll just make this a dark shade of blue. Maybe I'll go with a color, a shade like that. That looks pretty good. I'll get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And now we can go back to the select tool and click on this yellow image and bring the opacity all the way up. And let me zoom out a little bit so we can get a better picture of how things are progressing. You can come down to layer one and toggle off the visibility and you can get an idea of how things are coming along here. And I'll go ahead and turn the visibility back on and continue on creating the image. As you see here, what I've laid out here applies to the rest of the image. So you could virtually just go along and just continue creating the rest of this image like I did here. I don't think you need me to go through each and every step individually. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this image and I'll speed it up so you can uh, get a better idea of it. And I'll catch up with you then. Okay, so as you can see, I went around and I finished up the rest of the image. In fact, I, uh, I didn't create new layers for the rest of the blue, the blue here. I just put it all on the same layer and just used the uh, you know, lay, uh, razor lower selection function to put things above or below each other. And uh, if you turn off the visibility of layer one, you can see we've created our bird. We've created our vector tracing of our bird using Inkscape. So uh, that's the basics of how you can go about creating vector illustrations uh, using another image as a reference using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.